What up, guys? Boy, Mr. Dan Tamarie Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, May 14th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone had a great Mother's Day weekend. Kate Blanchett, Kristen Stewart, Selma Hayek, Patty Jenkins, Marion Cotillard, and Ava DuVernay were among the artists to lead a march on the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival in France Saturday. 82 women participated in the protests against gender inequality in the film industry. The numbers symbolizes how many movies made by female filmmakers have been chosen as official selections at the festival since it began in 1946. More than 1,600 films helmed by men have competed at the festival over the years. Blanchett and Agnes Varda took turns reading out a statement explaining their position. Varda and Jane Champion are the only women filmmakers to ever win the festival's prestigious Palme d'Or. Uh, the statement Varda and Blanchett read said, Women are not a minority in the world, yet the current state of our industry says otherwise. As when we all face our own unique challenges, but we stand together on these stairs today as a symbol of our determination and commitment to progress. We are writers, producers, directors, actresses, cinematographers, talent agents, editors, distributors, sales agents, and all involved in the cinematic arts. We stand in solidarity with all women of industries. Blanchett is this year's uh, uh, president of the festival jury. Harrison Ford interrupted a television interview with Eldon Ehrenreich was doing with Entertainment Tonight this weekend. Ehrenreich was uh, talking about his portrayal of Han Solo, the young intergalactic pilot and smuggler he plays in Solo, a Star Wars story. Ford played an older version of the iconic character in four Star Wars blockbusters. The Entertainment Tonight Twitter account teased Saturday, the only thing better than one Han Solo is two. Harrison Ford dropped by at Cameron Matheson's interview and surprised hashtag solo Star Wars story star Alden Ehrenreich. The brief video shows Ehrenreich talking to a reporter when Ford walks in behind him with solo director Ron Howard. Ehrenreich claimed, oh my God. Ford growled, get out of my chair, get out of my life, before shaking hands with and hugging the younger actor as Howard clapped and everyone in the room laughed. Ford and Howard have been friends for decades after co-starring in the 1973 movie American Graffiti, which was helmed by Star's creator George Lucas. Oscar-winning filmmaker Martin Scorsese has signed on to lead a Netflix special about the iconic Canadian sketch comedy series SCTV. Scheduled to premiere next year on CTV in Canada and Netflix everywhere else, the program will star Rick Moranis, Joe Flattery, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, uh, Martin Short and Dave Thomas. The SCTV cast is to reunite Sunday uh, for a panel discussion moderated by Jimmy Kimmel at Toronto's Elgin Theatre. It will be filmed and included in the special. SCTV uh, aired for six seasons between 1976 and 1984. The show also featured the late John Candy and Harold Ramis. NBC says it has renewed the cop comedy Brooklyn Nine-Nine for a sixth season after Fox canceled it this week. The network's Twitter account said early Saturday, We've got your six. Hashtag Brooklyn Nine-Nine is officially coming to NBC. The show's creator Dan Gore retweeted, Hey everyone, just wanted to say no big deal, but NBC just picked up Hashtag Brooklyn Nine-Nine up for season six. Sorry, it's Andy Samberg, Terry Crews, Andre Brager, Stephanie Beatrice, Melissa Fumero, Joe uh, Lo Trujillo, and Chelsea Peretti. The show was one of many Fox can- shows canceled this week, including The Exorcist, Last Man on Earth, and The Mick. Fox said Friday has revived Tim Allen's sitcom Last Man Standing for the 2018-2019 television season. ABC canceled the show last year after six seasons despite high ratings and a devoted fan base because the network was getting rid of its entire Friday night comedy block. Returning with Allen for the new episodes on Fox are Nancy Travis, Jonathan Adams, Amanda Fuller, Christopher Sanders, and Jordan Masterson. The series is about a church-going Colorado man who is married with three adult daughters and runs a marketing for a chain of outdoor spinning goods stores outlets. It's unclear whether LMS co-star Hector Elizondo, Molly Ephraim, and Catherine Dever will be back for the seventh season, however. Allen said in a statement Friday, excited, Team LMS 
was in the sixth inning ahead by four runs. Stands were packed, and then for no reason, they called off the game. It leaves you sitting in the dugout holding a bat and puzzle. Now we got the news from Fox that it's time to get back out on that diamond. Hell yes, I'm excited. When I heard the offer to create more episodes of Last Man Standing, I did a fist pump so hard I threw my back out. Alan credited the support from the series' fans for its arrival. Alan says, I cannot be more grateful for the fans who have wrote petitions and kept up the passion and incredible support for the show. And a fist pump ouch for Dana Walden and Gary Newman at Fox for not only listening to the fans, but for making the ball move to bring Last Man Standing back. I'm sure audiences will be curious to see what we look like after all these years. Oh, it has only been one year. Well, it just goes to show you a lot can happen in a year. Uh, Gary Newman and Dana Walden, the chairman and chief executive officers of Fox Television Group, said in a joint statement, Last Man Standing ended too soon and the outcry from the fans has been deafening. We want to put the show back together since its final taping a year ago, and Tim never gave hope either. Thanks to its millions of devoted viewers and the irrepressible Tim Allen, we haven't seen the last of Last Man Standing. The Exorcist creator Jeremy Slater announced via Twitter Friday that his horror anthology series has been canceled by Fox after two seasons. Slater tweeted, sorry guys. He wrote in another post, I know it's easy to get angry at Fox, but the reality is that we were the lowest rated drama on any network and they still brought us back for a second season because they love the show. There are no bad guys in this scenario. He also added, I was lucky enough to work with the greatest collection of writers, actors, artists, and crews that anyone could ask for. Our amazing fans supported us every step of the way. I made lifelong friends and 20 hours of pretty good television. That's not a bad legacy at all. Slayer's final tweet on the subject reads, At the end of the day, all I can feel is gratitude for every single member of the hashtag Exorcist congregation who followed us on this unbelievable adventure. I wish we could have given you a proper ending, but the characters belong to you now. You decide how their story ends. Each season of the show followed two Catholic priests played by Ben Daniels and Alfonso Herrera as they help people possessed by demons. Season 1 co-starred Gina Davis and Alan Ruck, and Season 2 featured John Cho and Alicia Witt. The first season also served as a sequel of sorts to the 1973 classic thriller The Exorcist. NBC has canceled its action drama series Taken, starring Clive Standen and Jennifer Beals after two seasons. Taken acted as a prequel to the film series of the same name, starring Liam Neeson. Standen starred as a younger version of Nielsen's character Brian Mills as he becomes a deadly CIA operative who is recruited by Beals. NBC recently pulled uh, Taken off their schedule, hinting that the cancellation was imminent. Producers Europa Corp TV USA and Universal Television will be shopping Taken Around as they search for a new platform to host the series, Variety reported. ABC has canceled several of its shows, including the Designated Survivor starring Kiefer Sullivan and Cal Penn and Quantico led by Priyanka Chopra. Uh, Designated Survivor is wrapping after two seasons and Quantico will end after three. Penn and tweeted Friday along with the cast photo. Thanks for a great two years, guys. Series finale is next week. What a fun ride. Much love. Penn wrote in another tweet, Hey, at Priyanka Chopra, let's do a movie. Penn addressed his longtime friend and Harold Kumar co-star, at John the Cho, you too, let's do this. Uh, the uh, the co-star whose show, The Exorcist, was canceled by Fox this week as well. Cho responded with a fist bump and handwriting emojis. ABC also decided not to order additional seasons of its freshman series, The Crossing, Deception, Alice Inc., The Mayor, and Kevin Probably Saves the World. CBS has renewed its procedurals, elementary, and criminal minds for a 7th and 14th season, respectfully. Additional seasons of Instinct, Man with the Plan, Life in Pieces, and Celebrity Big Brother have also been ordered. Cut from the 2018-2019 lineup, however, are Scorpion, Kevin Can Wait, and Superior Donuts. The network announced last month and plans to bring back Blue Bloods. Bull, Hawaii Five-0, Madam Secretary, MacGyver, NCIS Los Angeles, NCIS New Orleans, Survivor, The Amazing Race, 48 Hours, and 60 Minutes. Kevin Catway co-stars Kevin James and Leah Remini expressed their gratitude to their fans and CBS in the wake of the sitcom's cancellation after two seasons. Remini wrote on Instagram, I want to say thank you to the amazing cast, crew, producers, and the writers of at Kevin Can't Wait CBS. 
He accepted me with open arms. For me to get to work with ad official Kevin James again day in and day out was a godsend. I laughed every day, and I will miss that the most. You don't always get a second chance at something that meant so much to you, and I did, and I'm so grateful for it. It came at a time when I needed to laugh, so thank you all. I am so happy that it happened, and I will miss seeing all of you. Thank you to at CBS TV and at Sony for a great time. James said in a separate online post, I want to say thank you to all the fans for the love and support. I was so blessed to be able to work every day with the most amazing cast, crews, writers, and support team. Thank you all. Thank you at CBS TV Studios, and thank you at Sony for your constant dedication to the show. I wouldn't trade this experience for anything in the world. Okay, maybe a season three. Remini and James previously starred in the sitcom The King of Queens for nine seasons from 1998 to 2007. Remini guest starred in season one of Kevin Can Wait and was promoted to full-time cast member in season two after they killed off the character of James's wife, Donna, who was played by Aaron Haynes. Fox announced Sunday it has renewed its action drama Lethal Weapon for a third season, but without Clayne Crawford, who starred in the first two seasons. Uh, the show's Twitter account says, We are back. Hashtag Lethal Weapon has been renewed for season three, and we're so excited to welcome Sean William Scott to our Lethal family. Scott, who is known for his work in the American Pie film franchise, is joining the show as Crawford makes his exit. He has to play a new character opposite series regular Damon Waynes in a series based on the film franchise of the same name. Crawford expressed gratitude for his job in an Instagram post last month and apologized for his onset behavior, which ultimately led to his firing. He says the first reprimand was because I reacted with anger over working conditions that did not feel safe or conducive to good work under the leadership of a guest director and assistant director who, in turn, were angry at my response. I met with human resources. I apologized for my part of the conflict, and I competed completed a studio point of therapy in October. I even shared a sizable portion of my paycheck with one of the parties involved per the instruction of the studio. The second record per man happened just a few weeks ago during an, the episode I was directing. An actor on set felt unsafe because a piece of shrapnel from an effect hit him. It was an unfortunate event that happened in spite of all precautions and procedures being followed. I take responsibility for the incident because I was in charge of the set. Crawford praised all of his collaborators and insisted he would never intentionally jeopardize other people's jobs by causing the network to consider canceling the show. He says, I'm incredibly sorry if my passion for doing good work has ever made anyone feel less than comfortable on set or feel less than celebrated for their efforts. Furthermore, I apologize to all the cast and crew for any negative attention Lethal Weapon is receiving because of these incidents. Amy Schumer hosted Saturday Night Live this weekend and appeared in a Sex and the City-style parody of The Handmaid's Tale. The three-minute clip has gotten more than 250,000 views since it was posted on YouTube late Saturday. A uh, message company, the online video says, from the executive producer of Sex and the City and author Margaret Atwood comes Handmaids in the City. The sketch show shows Schumer, Addie Bryan, Kate McKinnon, and Cicely Strong meeting for brunch while dressed in the red capes and white bonnets the women wear in the dystopian drama The Handmaid's Tale. Like the quartet of the comedy Sex and the City, the women on Handmaids in the City talk and laugh about their relationships, but the conversation of these characters becomes dark as they joke about being abused and controlled by men who think their only purpose is to breathe. A voiceover says, it's the show critics are calling so brutal and more uplifting than the news. If you're not traumatized, you're not watching TV. Buckingham Palace released on Twitter this weekend new details about Prince Harry's May 19th wedding to U.S. actress Meghan Markle. On Sunday morning, the official royal family account featured the image of an illuminated document along with the message bearing the Queen's signature, the instrument of consent records Her Majesty's consent to the marriage of Prince Harry and Miss Meghan Markle. The palace said on Saturday the couple have asked that the most uh, Reverend Michael Bruce Curry, the 27th presiding bishop and primate of the Epos Episcopal uh, Church, to give the addresses their wedding. The palace tweeted, Presiding Bishop Curry will join the Dean of Windsor, the, the retired Reverend David Connor, who will conduct the service. The most revered and uh, retired honoree, um, Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, will, officially, uh, will officiate as the couple make their marriage vows. Harry is the Queen's grandson and the second son of Prince Charles and the late Princess Diana. Khloe Kardashian shared on Instagram Saturday the first video showing her infant daughter True's face. Kardashian captioned the clip, Happy One Month True. The brief home video uh, shows the baby who has freckles sprinkled across her nose with her eyes wide open. 
Uh, Kardashian can be heard telling her daughter, happy one month old, I love you, pretty girl. The video has a filter with animated flowers and butterflies over it. Born April 12th, True is the first child of, for Kardashian and her boyfriend, professional basketball player, Tristan Thompson. Jurassic Park The Ride is to officially close at Universal Studios Hollywood on September 3rd. The dinosaur theme attraction, which opened the California theme park in 1996, will be torn down to make way for Jurassic World Ride, which is expected to open in 2019. Uh, news release reads, After sending millions of guests back to Jurassic era for menacing face-to-face -face encounters with such predators as the Sectorosaurus, the Pelotopelophophus, the Dilophophophorus, the Velotoraptors, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Jurassic Park, the ride will become extinct in preparation for a new next generation experience that's even more immersive and technologically advanced. The new ride will pay homage to Jurassic Park and will reimagine this landmark film franchise for theme park guests. The Jurassic Cove restaurant and Jurassic Outfitters retail store will also close with the attraction and reopen next year. The park is hosting a Jurassic Park 25th anniversary celebration this week to this weekend to mark the beginning of the blockbuster film franchise. The fifth movie in the series, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, is scheduled to arrive in theaters June 22nd. It will co-star Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. The adventure movies focus on repeated efforts to bring back prehistoric creatures and contains them on islands so people can visit and study them. However, the enormous animals always manage to escape containment and endanger the lives of humans. Anna Faris, Kristen Bell, and other celebrities read text messages sent from their mothers on Jimmy Kimmel Live in honor of Mother's Day. Uh, Faris's mother said, uh, My dear Annie, I hope this doesn't wake you. I just want to know how proud your father and I are of you. As you know, we truly believe you are the greatest actress of your generation. We do someday hope you transition into dramatic work. Before expressing concern that the actress isn't wearing enough screen sunscreen and that the text messages might wake her up due to being sent at 3.34 a.m. Um, Ferris's mother continued, please give Alice and Jenny our love and congratulations. No one deserves the Oscar more than her. Jenny, who co-stars with Ferris on CBS's Mom, won the Academy Award for Best, for Best Supporting Actress for her work in I, Tanya. <laughs> Bell's mother, meanwhile, attempted to use her daughter's connection to Kimmel in order to find out who would be taking home an Oscar. Bell's mother says, Hey, Kristen, I know that you know Jimmy Kimmel, and he's doing the Oscars, so tell him to give you all the winners so you can give me the winners and I can win at my Oscar party. Ike Barinholtz, Jack Bray McBrayer, Adam Scott, Tony Hale, Patton Oswalt, Will Forte, YG and Anthony Anderson also took part in the skit, sharing comedic text messages sent by their mothers. Hale said his mom sent him about his Netflix comedy series. Hey, son, our new friends are loving Arrested Development. We still don't get it. Kimmel recently featured the cast of Avengers Infinity War, including Benedict Cumberbatch, Samuel L. Jackson, and Chris Evans, among others, meaning, reading mean tweets by, sent by fans. The World of Dance has been renewed for a third season, according to NBC. Dancer and actress Jenna Dewan hosts the series. Dewan wrote in an Instagram post Thursday, before you check out season two on May 29th, go ahead and mark your calendars for season three, baby. Hashtag World of Dance. The message accompanied an image of her with the show's judges, entertainer Jennifer Lopez, answer Derek Huff, and rapper Neo. World of Dance gives ours a chance to compete for a grand prize of a million dollars. Lopez said in a statement, We set out to make World of Dance a competition series of the highest caliber. Every act that hits the stage gives their all and challenges themselves against the most elite athletes in the world. As an executive producer and judge, I'm constantly reminded of the heart and determination it takes to rise to the challenge and become the best of the best. I can't wait to see the talent that comes across our stage for season three. Former couple The Weeknd and Bella Hadid were a spy kissing Thursday in Cannes, France. The 20-year-old singer and 21-year-old model got close to the Cannes Film Festival after party, according to TMZ. Los Angeles Times reported The Weeknd and Hadid attended the Magnum Times Alexander Wang party at the Promenade de la Corset. Hadid is the face of Magnum's new ice cream new campaign. Uh, so it said the weekend and Hadid spend the night huddled in the VIP area. The pair were openly affectionate as they kissed intermittently and were later seen leaving the party together. The weekend and Hadid split in November 2016 after nearly two years of dating. The pair sparked reconciliation rumors at Coachella Music Festival in April following the weekend split from Selena Gomez in the fall. Hadid commented on Instagram after E! News reported she and the weekend were spotted kissing all night at a Coachella after party. It wasn't me. 
Melanie Griffin says she adores daughter Dakota Johnson's boyfriend. Cole plays frontman Chris Martin. The 60-year-old the 60 year old actress discussed her 28-year-old daughter's relationship with Martin Thursday at the Global Gift Foundation USA's Women's Empowerment Luncheon in Los Angeles. She told reporters, I adore him, but she is very proud about her life, and I respect that. Johnson, an actress known for the Fifty Shades of Grey and its sequels, is the daughter of Griffin and actor Don Johnson. She was first linked to Mark and Martin in October with Us Weekly Lay reporting the pair were dating. Uh, Soros said of the Coldplay singer, they've gotten to know each other really well and are very comfortable one other, with one another. Chris sends Dakota his music to get her opinion. It's more than just a fling. Johnson and Martin got close to the Stella McCartney show in, June, in January and were spotted holding hands at the Ellen DeGeneres 60th birthday party the next month, according to People. Martin split from Gwyneth Paltrow in March 2014 after 10 years of marriage and shares 13-year-old daughter Apple and 12-year-old son Moses with the actress. Paltrow is engaged to producer Brad Falchuk and said this month she's enjoying wedding planning. R. Kelly has responded to music streaming service Spotify announcing that it's removed the singer's catalog from their playlists and algorithmic recommendations. Spotify, which is still keeping Kelly's music on the service, made the decision after Women of Color of Time's Up joined existing online campaign, hashtag Mute R. Kelly, an effort to call out corporations with ties to the R&B hit maker due to the sexual assault allegations he has faced over the years. Kelly was accused of holding women against their will as part of an abusive cult in July, allegations that he has, de- uh, that he has denied. Spotify said in a statement Thursday, we are removing R. Kelly's music from all Spotify-owned and operated playlists and algorithmic recommendations such as Discover Weekly. His music will still be available on the service, but Spotify will not actively promote it. We don't censor content because of an artist or creator's behavior, but we want our editorial decisions what we choose to program to reflect our values. When an artist and creator does something that is especially harmful or hateful, it may affect the way we work or with or support the artist or creator. Kelly responded through his representative again, denying the allegations of sexual assault and abuse and called out Spotify for their decisions. The statement says, Mr. Kelly for 30 years has sung songs about his love and passion for women. He is innocent on the false and hurtful accusations and the ongoing smear campaign against him waged by enemies seeking a payoff. He has never been convicted of a crime, and nor does he have any pending criminal charges against him. Spotify has the right to promote whatever music it chooses, and in this case, its actions are without merit. It is acting based on false and unproven allegations. It is bowing to social media fads and picking sides in a fame-seeking dispute over matters that have nothing to do with serving customers. It continued by saying, meanwhile, though, Spotify promotes numerous other artists who are convicted felons, others who have been arrested on charges of domestic violence, and artists who sing lyrics that are violent and anti-women in nature. Mr. Kelly falls in none of those categories, and it's unfortunate and short-sighted that Spotify fails to recognize this. Ariana Grande says she will always adore ex-boyfriend Mac Miller. The 24-year-old singer broke her silence in an Instagram Stories post Thursday following her split from the 26-year-old rapper after nearly two years of dating. Grande wrote in referencing Miller's given name, Hi, this is one of my best friends in the world and favorite people on the planet, Malcolm McCormick. I respect and adore him endlessly, and I'm grateful to have him in my life in any form at all times, regardless of how our relationship changes and what the universe holds for each of us. She said, unconditional love is not selfish. It is wanting the best for that person, even at that moment. It's not you. The star concluded, I can't wait to know and support you forever, and I'm so proud of you. TMZ reported Wednesday that Grande and Miller called it quits due to their busy schedules. The couple have confirmed their relationship in September 2016, following months of dating rumors. Post Malone's Beer Bongs and Bentleys is number one on the U.S. album charts. Coming in at number two on the Billboard 200 album charts is Keith Urban's Graffiti U, followed by J. Cole's K.O.D. and Cardi B's Invasion of Privacy and the Greatest Showman soundtrack. Rounding up the top tier are Janelle Monae's Dirty Computer number six, Young Boys Never Broke Again Until Death Calls My Name at number seven, Gossmax When Legend Rises number eight, Post Malone's Stony at number nine, and Jason Aldean's Rearview Mirror uh, Town at number ten. Avengers Infinity War is the number one movie in North American box office for a third weekend after earning an additional $61.8 million in receipts, BoxOfficeMojo.com announced Sunday. Since its premiere, the movie has generated $1.60 
$1.6 billion in global ticket sales, including $546.8 million domestically and $1.059 billion overseas. Coming in this weekend in North America, at number two is Life of the Party with $18.5 million, followed by Breaking In at number three with $16.5 million, Overboard at number four with $10.1 million, and A Quiet Place at number five with $6.4 million. Rounding up the top tier are I Feel Pretty at number six with $3.7 million, Rampage at number seven with $3.4 million, Tully at number eight with $2.2 million, Black Panther at number nine with $1.9 million, and RBG at number 10 with $1.2 million. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1998, the legendary singer, actor, and show business icon Frank Sinatra dies of a heart attack in Los Angeles at the age of 83. Sinatra emerged from an Italian-American family in Hoboken, New Jersey, to become the first modern superstar of popular music with an entertainment career that spanned more than five decades. In the first incarnation of his singing career, he was a master of the romantic ballad popular during World War II. After his appeal began to wane in the late 1940s, Sinatra reinvented himself as a swap swinger with a rougher, world-weary singing style and began a spectacular comeback in the 1950s. In addition to his great musical success, Sinatra appeared in 58 films. One of his earliest was Anchors Away in 1945, playing a cocky Italian-American soldier who meets a violent death for in From Here to Eternity, co-starring Burke Lancaster and Montgomery Cliff. Sinatra won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. His film flourished after that as he starred as Nathan Detroit in the movie musical Guys and Dolls in 1955 and played a heroin addict in The Man with the Golden Arm in 1955, for which he was nominated for the Oscar for Best Actor. He also starred in the musicals High Society 1956 and Pal Joy in 1957 and turned in a memorable performance as an army investigator in the acclaimed film The Manchurian Candidate in 1962. By the late 1950s, Sinatra had become a show, the epitome of show business success and glamorous rough-edged masculinity. He even headed up his own entourage known as the Rat Pack, which included Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, and Joy Bishop. The group had originally formed around Humphrey Bogart, who died in 1957. The Rat Pack first appeared together on the big screen in 1960's Casino Caper Ocean's 11. They would go on to make Sergeants 3, 1962, 4 for Texas, 1963, and Robin and the Seven Hoods in 1964. On screen in real life, the pack's famous stomping grounds include Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and New York, notably the Copacabana Club. Sancho worked steadily in the films throughout the 1960s, though many of his films' uh, performances seem almost perfunctory. His last major Hollywood role came in 1980's The First Deadly Sin. A famous heartthrob, Sinatra married four times, divorcing his longtime sweetheart Nancy Barbato after a decade, and three children, Nancy, Frank Jr., and Christina, to marry the actress Ava Gardner in 1951. The marriage lasted then two years, and in 1966, Sinatra married the 21-year-old actress Mia Farrow, 30 years his junior. 